Welcome back to the Interviewing People Career Cast, featuring highlights from the full-length interview with Carrie Hallman, an associate professor of writing, rhetoric, and communication at Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky. In the highlights, Carrie shares how her career path changed once she entered college, how a professor earns tenure, and much more. So sit back, relax, and know you can always go back to watch our full interview if you'd like to learn more. Enjoy the show. When I graduated Van Buren, I went to Wright State University, and I started as a pre-med biology student in the honors program there. And I liked it all right. Um, I don't love blood. I don't love needles. And I actually couldn't vision for myself what it would look like to move into something within biology. I didn't, Wright State was a good school in a lot of ways. I did not have a relationship with an advisor as an undergraduate student. Um, I got paired with somebody who apparently never came to campus. So I didn't talk through, I think if I would have talked through this with somebody at that point, they probably would have helped me think about a way to make that major and the careers that it could lead to work. But I had always been really torn um, between pre-med and English. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to switch to English. Um, I love reading. I love writing. I love talking about reading and writing with people. So actually within my first year there, I switched to being an English major and I really loved it. The program that I was in had a couple different tracks. So you could do more of just a straight literature focus. You could do a professional and technical writing focus, and you can also do a creative writing focus. Um, and you still got a little bit of all of the other classes, but I ended up taking the professional and technical writing focus um, and graduated in 2006 with my uh, bachelor's. And I had started working in the writing center when I was at Wright State, actually somewhat serendipitously. Um, if you got a certain grade in your like first year writing classes, you just automatically got a letter from the writing center director saying, hey, you might be interested in working at the writing center. Um, and I was. So I started working at the writing center and realized I really, really liked working with people to help them flesh out their ideas and think about what, you know, arguments they wanted to make or stories that they wanted to tell. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of digital stuff then, right. but, uh, you know, um, and so I knew that there were other people who were working in the Writing Center who were graduate students in a program at Wright State, and some of them were teaching some of the first year writing classes, and that really interested me. Actually, Bowling Green State University, just up the road, has a really good program for that. And at that time, they had, she's not there anymore, she's at Duquesne now, but um, a scholar in the field who is like profound uh, has published a lot. So I still got to kind of move right back up I-75 and go to Bowling Green for my PhD program. Um, I had looked at some other schools and there were some other really good ones, but that just worked out well. Uh, so I got my PhD from there and that was also, all of that was housed within English departments, all of my, my uh, bachelor's, my master's, and my PhD, um, but with some different tracks. So like I said, my undergrad was sort of focused on professional and technical writing. Then I realized I was sort of interested in teaching, so my master's was focused on composition and rhetoric. Um, and then my PhD was actually a similar name, except it was rhetoric and writing studies. Um, and all through my master's and my PhD coursework, I was also teaching primarily first year writing courses, um, and then eventually an advanced writing course. And I loved it. Uh, I knew that was what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to end up somewhere where I got to do some research and some teaching. So uh, on the one hand, it's a requirement, right? Like if you are gonna be a college professor, almost undoubtedly, you will be expected to do some research. There is a range of types of institutions and they have differing expectations. So if you're at a research intensive, which we call like an R1 institution, your research is gonna be your focus. It's gonna be the main thing that you're, you know, the people who are above you and get to say if you stay there or have to go find a job somewhere else, 
that's the main thing that they're going to evaluate you based on. Um, and I really like research and I knew that it was an important part for me because it helps. I mean, I'm just curious. I'm really curious all the time to find answers to things. So research is my way of being able to do that. And that's for school topics as well as, you know, just like what daycare should my children go to and tons of research, right? Um, so I, I genuinely enjoy it. Um, it informs my teaching. That's really important. Like I am lucky I get to teach classes that are in my research area. Um, and so when I go to teach digital rhetoric or when I go to teach feminist rhetoric or when I go to teach business writing, like there, I'm constantly keeping up with what it is that's going on in those fields and what the latest scholarship is. Um, and that's important for me to be able to teach those classes well. Um, I mentioned before that I did want to end up at a school where teaching was more of the emphasis. So at a liberal arts school, research is required. Um, and that's good. I like doing it. Uh, but I knew that it wasn't going to be in the same way that there's the phrase of like publish or perish which within higher ed. Um, and it can be pretty cutthroat at some of the research intensive institutions. Um, you know, you have to have a certain number of books and articles and conference presentations and your, you know, citations have to be at a certain level that other people, you didn't just put the work out there, other people are actually reading it and using it. Um, and for me personally, I knew that worrying so much about that would detract from my ability to focus on the teaching as much as I wanted to. College professors are meant to be provoking their students. They are meant to raise uncomfortable topics. Um, I talk a lot with my students about like, you know, they come in with the expectation that they should be comfortable in my classroom. We talk a lot about building sort of community guidelines on the first day. And I push back a little bit and say, like, I, I'm never going to put you in harm. I never want you to feel unsafe. But you will not always feel comfortable because we're going to talk about really difficult, challenging topics. Um, and that's really what higher education is about. And so tenure exists so that people don't have to feel as vulnerable um, to losing their job just because they bring up a topic that maybe somebody doesn't like. And I think that's a pretty big difference between high school teaching or any K through 12 teaching and college teaching, um, and especially at a private institution like where I am. So it's a private liberal arts institution. But generally, the process for tenure is the same if, if the position, there's lots of people who teach college who are not in a tenure track position. Um, that could be because they are just teaching a couple classes here and there at different universities, and that would be called an adjunct. It could be that they're in a part-time position. Now that there's all of these questions about whether or not tenure should even exist, there are positions like you're a lecturer, so you have some some job security, but it's not the same as tenure, and you don't have necessarily the same expectations to get to that point. Um, but so generally, if somebody is in a tenure track position, if they're thinking about wanting to be tenured, there are going to be three categories that they are evaluated on, and it will differ how important each category is and what the expectations within those categories are at each institution. Um, but it's teaching, research, and service. travel abroad if you can. It is not out of reach entirely. Like I always thought it would just be way too expensive and I couldn't do it. And so I just didn't look into how to maybe get scholarships for that or what kinds of support were available. Um, and so I actually didn't travel outside of the United States really uh, until I taught a travel course in Ireland in 2015. And the experience myself from the faculty side, but also then just seeing my students there. Um, I already before that knew that it was a big regret of mine that I never looked into study abroad, but that just really cemented it for me. So I wish I would have had a, a more just like something that my mom always says is like, why not ask? The worst that a person can say is no. And I think if I had had more of that attitude going into college and all the way through, um, I developed it a little bit more along the way, and I wish I would have had that a little bit earlier. Yeah.
Thank you for watching this episode showing highlights of the latest Interviewing People career cast with Carrie Hong. And to make your Mondays better than ever, subscribe so you can hear more career stories from those who are actually doing the work. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember that the best part about Mondays is interviewing people.